Hey guys, welcome back to the Prehistoric Life Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Crawford, and today we are going to dive right in with Diplodocus. So, sadly, I don't have any Diplodocus figures, but here is a Diplodocus. As you can see, it's got the sauropod classic long tail. It's got the long neck, famous with sauropods. And it's got the big old body with the big old long legs. Something is going on with my computer. Because it keeps saying input not found. Hopefully that fixed it. Um, But yeah, it's got the little spines on its back. (laughs) <laughs> and it was thought to be known as the long, longest sauropod for a long time. Here's a Diplodocus skull. As you can tell, it's got the nose down here. It's got the eye here. It's got the, the long teeth of a sauropod. There's another drawing. So it got up to about 90 to 100 feet long. Can you stop doing that. Sorry, my computer's being really weird today. Um, got up to about 100, 90 to 100 feet long. It weighed about 10 tons and grew up to be 90 feet tall. I don't think that's right. I don't think some of these measurements are right. No, only seven meters. Is that it was tall trees, ferns, plants, bushes, berries, bushes, baked beans. No, I'm kidding. Its fossils were found in North America, uh, mainly Colorado, Montana, Utah, Wyoming, the Morrison Formation. Um, it is a large herbivore, a sauropod. It was long but light. Lived in forests, jungles, plains, along river valleys. Lived in herds of 12-ish to 14. It trampled its enemies. This bad boy could probably rear up on its back legs. Looking at the uh, leg length, it could probably rear up on its back legs and step on its enemies. And slam all of its weight, 10 tons, right onto, like, the spine of a big old carnivore. Um, as a head was, as was actually held more upward, higher off the ground, and not close to the ground, like scientists thought. And this is to protect its head, of course. It was discovered by Benjamin Mudge. Mujd, Mujde, and Samuel Wendell, Wendell, Will Wilston, Wendell Wilston in 1877. So, yeah, Diplodocus was pretty, pretty intriguing pretty long it's the people say brachiosaurus you think of the tall boy people say diplodocus you think of the long boy two factors have made diplodocus famous uh famous all over the world the first is that for a long time diplodocus was thought to be the largest at least in terms of length dinosaur to no known to walk the earth the second is the large number of skeleton casts of diplodocus Carnegie, Carnegie, that were donated by Andrew Carnegie. Yeah, Carnegie. To numerous museums around the world. While these casts still exist to be seen and studied by all, however, 
discoveries of new dinosaurs has since displaced Diplodocus for the claim from any claim it had to the title of biggest dinosaur. So there were many specimens found all throughout. Some are partial. They together review the full shape of a dinosaur. Footprints are also known. The first Diplodocus were found in 1877 by Benjamin Franklin Mudge and Samuel Wendell Wilson at Canyon City, Colorado. The remains were subsequently studied and named by Othniel Charles Marsh in a period of American paleontology history dubbed the Bone Wars. So Marsh named this guy in the during the Bone Wars. Marsh paid special to note. Marsh paid special. Sorry, my computer keeps flickering on and off. Marsh paid special note of the two long bone growth that were on the underside of the Kudal. Kudal? the tail vertebrate, and coined the name Diplodocus longus, or long double beam. However, the vertebrate of Diplodocus is named for our now known, or named for our now known to be, to not be unique. Where was I? In this genus, and can be found in many other species. In the species, uh, sauropod genre, genre, or the species of, or like the genus of Diplodocus, if that makes sense. It's got the basic sauropod body shape of a large round body on four legs with two, no, four legs with long tail and neck. Much of the length Diplodocus was actually neck. As much as six meters long, the tail, and even so, this granted, this is so hard to read whenever my computer keeps shutting off. Please stop doing that. Thank you. (laughs) What's this thing? The neck. Granted, Diplodocus, an incredible body length. The actual form would have been quite lightly built. As such, even when Diplodocus was thought to be the longest dinosaur, most considered other dinosaurs as Brachiosaurus to be larger on the ground for gra- of greater body weight. Today, neither of these dinosaurs, dinosaurs are considered, not is considered, the largest in the light of later discoveries such as Argentinosaurus, which is thought to be to have been heavier than either one. So like I said, Argentinosaurus takes the cake again. But Diplodocus still I feel remains one of, if not no, just one of the most famous sauropods out there. Diplodocus is very well known along with things like Brachiosaurus and Argentinosaurus and I'd even argue that Camarasaurus and Apatosaurus are still out there along with Brontosaurus are pretty famous. This thing lived 150 145 to 150 million 55 million years ago. So that would be 145 would be the End of the Creta- early Cretaceous. Is that be the Burmesian to the Kim Kimmeridigan periods of the Jurassic and Cretaceous? Probably just Jurassic though, and it kind of dwindled off to the Cretaceous. So here are some sauropod sounds that I have found that we are going to hopefully try and listen to. If my computer will work. So I'm going to go ahead and play these.
Kind of sounds like a car with really squeaky tires. Okay, that's like a snarl, snort thingy. Wait, that's like a straight up roar. That is definitely some kind of distress call. That's an elephant. I'm pretty sure that's an elephant. I'm telling you, that's got to be an elephant. There's no way that that's Diplodocus. That's an elephant. That's an elephant. It's an elephant. Yeah, no, that was elephant. That that last part was an elephant. Yeah, other than that last part, I think that that very well could have been Diplodocus. Because that last part started to just sound like an elephant. And this is Jurassic World Evolution. This is their sound effects. Oh. Um. 
Yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. It sound like Diplodocus. I could, I get those. Those all sounded like that. Other than the last part of that first video, where it just started to sound like an elephant. I, I, that, that very much so is what I think a Diplodocus could sound like. So, honestly, I, I like the Diplodocus. Then again, I like most sauropods. Again, if you want to get the same data that I'm getting, just go to prehistoricwildlife.com. It's the source I use. Uh, so go check that out. Um, check out on Spotify, which is where the main thing I upload on. Check out the website. Check out on Instagram for additional content. Because we're doing, I'll get into that in a second. And then finally, check out on YouTube because that's where I try to release early. So if you look on Instagram, you'll see that for the dinosaur content of the week, I had a potosaurus, which I did, I guess technically at the time of filming this, yesterday, quote unquote, and palmetto fossil excursions. And I decided to do Diplodocus because something came up with palmetto fossil excursions because people have lives and I recognize that and we're rescheduling that for them because I really want to talk to them. They're right here in South Carolina. I want to go maybe drive up there and meet them. Maybe if they're listening to this, I don't know. That would be really nice if, you know, you could shoot me the address and I could try to, I don't know, go visit. That'd be really awesome. Completely worth my time, too. Um, besides the point, uh, so we did Diplodocus adapt into what's going on. <coughs> and remember to follow on YouTube, Instagram, and check out the website like I just showed. Um, yeah, that's about it. I'm your host, Eric Crawford. I will see you all next time for more prehistoric life podcasts and dinosaur content. Remember. Keep it prehistoric. Goodbye.